Hi there. Uh, it's March 29th, Friday. It's Good Friday. We're going to have communion together. And um, I have a blessing for you. And we're going to uh, read a little bit of a lesson out of Hidden Treasures of Kingdom Prayer by Valerie Moody. I like her materials. I'll show you the book. I like her materials. Uh, she has done a lot of research into the Hebraic roots and culture and understanding of our Christian faith and how it ties in to the Jewish faith. And it's it's very enriching. It helps us to get so much more out of our understanding of scripture because of what she explains. So I was I saw this book on my shelf and I had yanked it out a couple of days ago and it was sitting on the bed back here and I saw it before we got on and I was like, oh, the power of blessing. I thought this sounds really sounds like something we could use right now. So I'm going to kind of pick up down the page a little bit. It says, a blessing is not a reward, but an opportunity. And I thought that's interesting. So I thought a blessing was something that happens to you. You know, like you bless somebody and it's kind of like you touched them with the magic wand and something happens. And uh, that's not how they looked at it here in scripture. So let's get a better understanding of what God means by a blessing. A blessing is not a reward, but an opportunity. It is not the capstone of a life well lived. Rather, it is an opportunity to grow into what God desires us to be. She uses the name Elohim. Okay, that's the Jewish name for him. It's A blessing is an opportunity for us to grow into what God wants for us. Blessings are prophetic. And they envision the future welfare. I thought, well, isn't that interesting? I guess if you think about it, that's what we're doing. But I guess I never thought of it that way, that we're, we're asking for this better future for somebody by blessing them. Blessings were powerful in the ancient world and integrated into a legal contracts and treaties. The book of Revelation is a treaty which opens with a blessing. Those who read the book and heed its warnings are blessed. That's from Revelation 1.3. Revelation also closes with a curse. Those who alter this book by adding to it or subtracting from it are cursed. Revelation 22.18. Blessings, and the Jewish word for that is berakot, are distinct from supplications. Supplications are entreaties, things where we ask, where petitioners cast their burdens upon him. Blessings, on the other hand, are positive declarations, which invite God to divinely intervene. A Hebrew blessing never elevates the problem. It elevates the blessedness of the Holy One who solves the problem. As Jesus prepared to feed 5,000 people, he spoke a blessing. His blessing in John 6, 11 did not bless the food. It blessed the creator who was poised to miraculously multiply the food. Isn't that interesting? It's like a whole different way of looking at things and how we've looked at them before. I just thought this was so interesting. So, And I was hoping that you would find this interesting too. The 18 blessings is the famous Amida composed by somebody here, the men of great assembly. These 120 scribes, sages, and prophets wrote Hebrew prayers for the people of Israel. Working in the early second temple era, before the birth of Jesus, this group reportedly had the ability to combine letters, verses, and ideas in ways which unlocked the gates of heaven. Their Amidah converts, prayerful, Biblical longings into, con, oh, I'm sorry, not converts, converts, okay? We're not talking about people. We're talking about what they did. So their Amida converts prayerful biblical longings into blessings for God. It does not beg, it blesses. For example, Psalm 119 verses 153 and 54 pleads, see my affliction and deliver me, redeem me. 
rewritten as a blessing in the Amidah, this passage becomes, Behold our affliction, take up our grievance, and redeem us speedily for your name's sake, for you are a powerful redeemer. Blessed are you, redeemer of Israel. The Amidah blessing takes great care to elevate the redeemer and not the problem. I thought, hmm. This is, this is, I'm excited about this because this is something I've never considered before quite this way, quite this way that we, I've thought about focusing on who God is. And, you know, I think of that always with the, um, when they sent the 12 spies into the promised Holy Land and they came back and 10 of them said, oh, there's giants in there. We can't do this. And the other two came back and said, oh, God can handle this. Not a problem. So one was the 10 were elevating the problem and two were elevating God. And the challenge for us in our lives is to elevate God and not the problem. And you know, when people talk about how bad the world is getting and they talk about, you know, their, their country, or their government or the whatever they think is going on in the world. When they keep talking about that, and I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, we're forgetting how big God is and that he's got this. And these are all things that he prophesied for us in his word so that we wouldn't be surprised when we see these things happening. And we don't have to be doomsdayers because we have a promise and a glory to us to come. So I just think this is interesting. So a true story of the power of blessings surfaced recently in an American town. A pastor was grieved by the local pornography trade and cursed the businesses. He cursed the ground where those shops stood. He cursed everything related to porn that he knew how to curse in prayer. After announcing, pronouncing those curses, the pastor fully expected the businesses to wither and die. Instead, they prospered. A greater number of porn shops opened after he cursed them in prayer, and he dejectedly asked God what he was doing wrong and heard an answer which completely surprised him. I did not tell you to curse those businesses, he heard the father say. I told you to bless them. Remember, we're to bless our enemies and not to curse them. The pastor wondered if he could bless them without blessing their enterprise. Slowly, he began to bless them. He blessed the shop owners with fulfilling God's call in their lives. He blessed them with the ability to hear God's voice, with eyes to see, with ears to hear him, and hearts to chase after him. He blessed their buildings with fulfilling God's purposes for the real estate. One by one, customers stopped coming. Dollars dwindled, and the shop owners were forced to close their doors. Six weeks after the pastor began pronouncing blessings, Every porn retailer was gone. The Almighty did not respond to curses, but when he heard the blessings, the porn market crumbled. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that, I think that's wonderful. We needed to hear this. We needed to hear how to put that practice, put, put that into practice. How do we bless? How do we bless our enemies? I really appreciate this because the only thing I could ever think of to bless an enemy with was salvation, which is, of course, a good thing, but I like how he broke it down into different ways that he could bless something that was a problem in their area. I can remember being part of a group, how many years ago? Maybe five years ago, four years ago, I don't know. And, and I went to one of their prayer meetings and somebody was cursing some of the government leaders and was commanding him to die. And I said, I can't be a part of this group. I can't be a part of this group. That's, that's not what God calls us to do. He does not call us to call down curses on people and telling them to die just because he doesn't like who's in office. And it's like, okay. It's, it's, so I had, to, I had to wash my hands of that because I felt as though that group wasn't really following God. But, um, and there was more things, but that was that was a big one. So let's look at what he did here, at least what this, how this pastor did this. He wondered how he could bless them without blessing their enterprise. He didn't want to bless the actual business. So he began to bless the shop owners 
with fulfilling God's call on their lives. Boy, couldn't we do that for people? We could do that for our neighbors. We could do that for our coworkers, for our boss. We could do that for our government leaders. Wow. He blessed them with the ability to hear God's voice. Boy, that'd be good. I'd like to hear more of God's voice. <laughs> um, with eyes to see him and ears to hear him and hearts to chase after him. That sounds like a great thing to pray for our prodigal children, doesn't it? I think so. And he blessed their buildings with fulfilling God's purposes for that real estate. I had an interesting thing happen last night. We were we we drove out of town so that we could go see our granddaughter's little school play. She's in sixth grade and we got to see their play. And then afterwards, as a family and some of their friends, our son and daughter-in-law's friends, their kids, we went out to a restaurant for dessert. And the house across the street from my where my son and daughter-in-law live, they live kind of out in the country, but there's still a house across the street. And um, there was a very unfortunate death at that house. It was a couple that was engaged and the woman committed suicide in the front yard. You know, yuck. And um, my daughter -in -law said, boy, he's probably going to sell that house. I wonder, it, would you be interested in living there? And I'm thinking, not really. Not really. I mean, that house was up for sale before, and I wasn't interested in it then before that happened. Um, but now after that's happened. But then I got to thinking about it. Not so much necessarily for us, but thinking about the fact that, you know, the reason why people don't want it, because whether they think it's haunted or cursed or whatever, I thought, and, and there's the other part of me that thinks, well, yeah, but Who's going to want to buy a house like that? Some creepy person living across the street from my grandkids. Yuck. But then I thought, no, wait a minute. The enemy has essentially marked that territory for himself. Why can't we mark that territory for God? Isn't that part of our job here? Isn't that part of our job to battle the evil? This is, this, isn't this part of our job to spread the kingdom, to take things back for the Lord? I don't think we have to necessarily live there to do that, but we can pray over that property and we can, we can bless that property, bless, bless that real estate, just like he did in there, that it would serve God's purpose, bless that home, that it would serve God's purpose, you know, that godly people could come and live there and, and take that property back for God and spread the kingdom and not let the enemy keep spreading his garbage. So I was, I was thinking about that, think, thinking there's no reason that we have to let the enemy take that property. So I'm glad I'm reading this because it's given me a more specific way of how to pray for that property. Oh, we got some friends here today. There's Sarah. She says, hi, Sue. Glad to catch you live again. Can I make a prayer request through here? Someone I know is sick. Well, certainly, certainly we'll pray. Oh, oh, and there was somebody else. I forgot. Somebody else recently had said they had a prayer request, and I don't think it was you. If if hang on, you guys, I'm going to look it up real quick if I can, and see who um, see if I can find who requested prayer. I'm finding I ha I'm having to go into it. I have as a as a person who produces YouTube, I have I have another app that helps me to do stuff. I'm just not tech savvy, but anyhow, this person I I went there to look at it. And asked me for prayer. Mm. Hang in there, hang in there. Who was it that wanted me to pray for them? Oh, there's a lot of stuff here I haven't seen. Wow, I'm going to have to come back and read it. Um, Pray for her brother, Ricky. Okay. Uh, um. <laughs> um, brother Ricky, come to the Lord. Hmm. 
I'm not seeing the one I thought there was about about praying, but Sarah, you tell me what you want. Um, someone I know is sick. Grandma, oh, here's another person. We have a house in our neighborhood where someone committed suicide and lovely family bought that home and have lived there for many years with no problems they have claimed as their own. That's right. That's right. Please pray for situation in our family. What about praying for Gaza? And some and Sarah says that's great. It's for my boyfriend's grandfather who's very sick. We're just not too sure what exactly is going on, but he's just come out of the hospital and recovering as much as he can. But it's slow. Oh, that was it. Somebody, somebody knew somebody was going to be dying soon. They were at the hospital, and they wanted their salvation. Nuts. And I can't find the information on it. I don't know where it got to. Um, and where is a better place to post for prayer requests? Um, it. After the video, after the video is posted, you can put prayer requests underneath. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm checking. I, I don't always see them the day you post them, but when I see them, I, I pray for them. So let's, okay, let's look at our list of prayers here. So we've got, um, Sarah, someone, boyfriend's grandfather. Okay. I don't know if you have a name for him, Sarah's. Boyfriend's grandfather. And it, the question is, is he saved? That's more important than whether he's healed. We want to know if he's saved. Um, well, what about praying? P-R-E-A-Y. That's that's kind of like praying. We want P-R-A-Y. We can, we can pray for Israel and Gaza because we know that God wants that straightened out over there. Israel and Gaza. Uh, I'm glad to hear that about the house. And was there anything on anyone else? I guess that was it. Oh, the grandfather, Alex. Alex. Okay, Alex. And their family to grow deeper in faith. All right. Well, I'm going to open up to what I just read here before. Because we, we don't want to curse, we want to bless. Okay. Heavenly Father, we praise you today. We thank you because you gave us the gift of Jesus on the cross. You paid for our sins. You redeemed us from the hand of the devil. You've purified us. You've sanctified us. You've made us holy and righteous in your sight. You have separated our sins as far as the east is from the west, and you remember them no more. It's the enemy that wants to bring them back to our remembrance, not you. Because once you've done it, you've done it and it's settled. When the enemy tries to come back at us with guilt, and it's something we've already dealt with, Remind us, Lord, that you choose not to remember, and it's gone. That we are clean as snow in, in your eyes. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb. So, Lord, we have several prayer requests for you today on behalf of our community here online. And we want to lift up to you Sarah's boyfriend's grandfather, Alex, who is uh, experiencing some health problems. But... We seek you for his healing, but more importantly, we seek you for his salvation. We pray, Lord, that he would come into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, for no one can come to you except through Jesus. We pray that he would come to know Jesus and Jesus would come to know him, that you can make this happen in a divine way that we cannot, that if there's no human that can give him the, the message that your Holy Spirit can draw him and Jesus can talk to him. We thank you, Lord, that you will find a way where there seems to be no way. And Lord, that's true of Israel and Gaza and all that's going on. That is, This is a part of the world that's close to your heart. And you don't like to see anybody suffering. You don't like to see women and children 
being hurt. You, this, this is, it doesn't matter which side is doing it to which side. It does not please you. Lord, again, we have to place our faith in you because this is beyond what man can do. This is beyond us. This is your battle. And we trust you with your mighty right arm to straighten things out. Again, that you will make a way where there seems to be no way. And I I know over the years, I've, I've had to rest on that. I've had to place my faith in you where to make a way where there seems to be no way. And you have always faithfully done it. Lord, we place our faith in you and your faithfulness to, to do what needs to be done over there. We don't, we, I can't tell you how to move your right arm. I can't tell you what to do with your power. But we do look to you to do the right thing. And we trust you for that. There was somebody else that needed prayer. Um, hang on, let me see, is it? Uh, oh, you know, I had a situation in their family. Okay. Lord, you know what's going on in this family. And we want to pray. I want to pray the things that this pastor prayed here, this blessing. Let's bless What's your name? Grandma So Happy Homestead. Let's bless her family. We ask, Lord, that you would bless them. Bless each individual with fulfilling God's call on their lives. Bless them with the ability to hear your voice, with their eyes to see you, and to hear you with their ears, and that you would bless them with hearts to chase after you. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless, bless each of our homes where we live, apartment, house, whatever, wherever we live. I pray, pray that you would bless our homes with fulfilling the purpose God has for that real estate, that building, and that land. And Lord, I'm going to ask also for that property across the street from my son and daughter-in-law, that you would bless that property that you would cleanse that property and that it, that property would be blessed with fulfilling the purpose you have for that real estate, not only for the land, but also for the home. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name for hearing our prayer. That's all good. That's good. You know, I, I believe the Lord led us to that today because I haven't really looked at that book yet. It's, it was one of those ones I was thinking, oh, I wonder if I should take a look at that. And you know, when you got 25 other things going on, it wasn't something I really was eager to look at yet. I've got enough other stuff on my plate, but I think that was just the ticket. I think that's just what we needed. So I'm going, I have a final blessing that I have for you, and I also have communion. So I'll do the blessing for you now. And if you want to stay for communion, you can stay. Okay. So I bless you, all my friends here, those who, who like to tune in and who are seeking the Lord, I bless you to love and serve the Lord. I bless you to obey Jesus' commands because that's how you love him. I pray that you be blessed with your love, with love for Jesus Christ. I pray that you be blessed with God's word for it'll be a, uh, a light for your path and a lamp for your feet. I pray that you would be blessed by hiding God's word in your heart. And I pray that you be blessed with the ability to meditate on his word all day. That means to think on it and ponder it, understand it. And may you live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I pray that you be blessed this week and that we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. It may not be, you know, it's not an actual date, but it's when we're celebrating it. So I pray that you be blessed in this time of celebration. Thankfulness for this Good Friday, which I never understood why it was called good, but I do now. It's good for us. It's good for us that we be redeemed from the hand of the devil and restored to our Heavenly Father. Amen. So I'm going to, 
I've, I've got my little piece of cracker here. I've got a little electrolyte water. And um, Jesus, this is the time that we remember what you did for us. And when you were sitting at the table with your friends, you blessed God. He didn't bless the food. He blessed God. Bless God who provided this, just like we learned in here. This is a powerful blessing. We bless you, Lord, for this time that we have together. And we bless you for this food that you have given us. And he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his friends. He said, take this and eat it. This is my body, which will be given for you. I guess he did that during dinner because then it says after dinner was ended, he took the cup. I said, this is the cup, of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. Oh, and first he blessed God. So Heavenly Father, we bless you. We bless you just like Jesus did. And we bless you for providing this for us. And he took that cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. And this is the cup of my blood. And it will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we do bless you. We bless you. We exalt you. And we exalt your name. We exalt your word. And we exalt Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless us, each and every one of us, with living a life worthy of the testimony. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, someone else wants prayer. Um, Sandra wants prayer. She says, pray for me too. Me too. I want prayer. <laughs> and who else wants prayer? Okay, that's the same folks that are here. So, so, um, Sandra, oh Lord, we don't know what Sandra needs. She, We just know that she wants prayer. She's feeling perhaps desperate or, um, I don't know about her, but I know there's times that God through great times of feeling hopeless or helpless. And yet, we have to look at who God is, and God is our loving Father. We are his children, and he wants what's best for us, and he will do what's best for us. So I pray, Lord, that you would bless Sandra with the faith that she needs to strengthen her faith to trust you and to know you better and to be patient and know that you will work things out for her good. We ask this in Jesus' name. So there we go. There we go. We're good today. Thank you so much for being. It was really nice seeing you here. I know it's been a, a couple days. Um, did I did I get to show you the quilt? Did I get to show you guys the quilt that Chris and I made last weekend? I think I know I told you about it. I just can't remember if I showed it to you. Um, Jesus, we thank you for Susan. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. And her heart and her family and her ministry. Well, thank you. It's nice of you to say that. Um, I'm really humbled by, by this work that God has. And um, I am just so, <laughs> it's so not me. <laughs> it's one of these things I almost feel like a hypocrite. I almost feel like a hypocrite when I'm here because I, I, I just don't feel like I live a life that's worthy, you know, and like the only time I'm doing the right thing is when I'm sitting here on the computer. <laughs> it seems like the rest of the time it's kind of, I don't know, but, but that shows you how God can use anybody that it's not about me. It's about him. And it's about what he can do through, through us who are willing. And I, I, I just need to be more available to him for the rest of my time, I guess. I don't know. But but he's doing the work here, and, and he's allowing this to happen, and I'm so thankful for that. So and Sandra says, thank you so much, and, and God bless you. Thank you. Same to you. Um, I'm looking forward to reading some of the comments here because it looks like some of these comments were made like last week when I told you that some of my videos are getting taken down now. And they said, well, anybody who mentions the name of Jesus, they've been told to start taking their videos down. Well, 
we're going to be in trouble because I'm not going to stop talking about Jesus. Uh, Grandma so happy says, but that's what I appreciate, your heart for Jesus. We are messy people, but God cleans us up each and every day. Stand under the heavenly shower. He washes over each of us. That's right. That's right. It, it has nothing to do with us. It, you know, it's not even our own faith. It's the faith of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the work of God. For he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in Christ Jesus. So I used to give up. I, I still get discouraged, but I used to give up. And um, and now I understand that it's not it's not about me. It's about him and how much he loves us. And that I'm going to have to go back and listen. I want to listen to one of my videos. It was a couple of weeks ago about compel. God's love compels us or compels us. Something, something to do with the word compel. And it really hit me like in that last 24 hours, how, and it, how God's love compels me to want to be a better person because of his love for me and how he believes in me. And, and because because he loves me and knows that he's in me and can do things through me that it motivates me to want to be a better person. And what's what really motivated, what, what opened my eyes to that understanding, because before I was always trying to prove my love for God. Now I just need to show his love for me, you know, <laughs> rest in his love for me and move forward. But I was going through a really tough time a couple weeks ago. And I just was struggling. And I told a friend and she said, well, I'm going to pray for you. And she was doing it right then and there. She was praying. We got off the phone and she was praying for me. And she would text me like every five minutes. How are you doing? How are you doing? And I'm just like, because I knew I needed to turn to the Lord in prayer. And for whatever reason, there was something in me really, really resisting wanting to turn to the Lord in prayer. Isn't that crazy? But I was just, it was like this battle. It was a battle going on inside and I I just couldn't make myself do it. And uh and she she texted again, how how are you doing? Are you doing it? I'm praying. Okay, I'm gonna pray some more. And then it was to the point it's like, oh my gosh, I have got to do this or this poor lady's gonna keep praying for me until I get this right, until I can humble myself before the Lord. I needed to humble myself and and just make things right with him. And, uh, and it was because of her love for me, praying for me in the minute, right then and there, saying, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to stop praying for you until you get straightened out, until you feel better. And that, that I just knew I had to do it. I had to do it right then and there because this lady wasn't going to give up on me. My friend wasn't going to give up on me. So I did. So I did. I finally, I just, I had to go to my knees and I had to repent and I had to ask the Lord to help me through that, whatever was going on. I didn't even understand it myself. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I needed his help. And, and it broke it, whatever it was, it broke through. So, um, so that I could, whatever it was, so I could think straight again and be in right relationship again. And so I was able to tell my friend, okay, it's it's happened. I've done it for good. Thank you so much. I don't think she knows how much she did, how much she helped me. I've tried to tell her, but it's it's hard to understand. But I mean, it really it it broke something free that I needed. And I and it was because of her love for me that it made me do what I needed to do. And that's what opened my eyes to God's love for me, saying, I am not gonna let go of you. Until we get this right. And he's praying for me. Jesus is interceding for us before the Father. He is praying on our behalf. He died on our behalf. His love for us compels us to continue to keep trying. Even in the midst of failures. Especially in the midst of failures. To keep trying. His love for us compels, compels us to keep trying. And he showed his ultimate love for us today on this Good Friday. And the beauty of the resurrection is to show that his love conquers all, that it, it made it possible, that he was successful in what he did, that we truly are free. 
and that we can walk in that freedom. So I hope you all have a very blessed Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. <sighs> Passover is a couple weeks away. We're supposed to be tied together, but I just hope you have a blessed time. It was very nice to see you today. I'm so glad you were able to comment today. I think sometimes that gets jammed up too. So I'm, I'm glad you were here and um, just have a <laughs> have a blessed Sunday. I don't. What are you wearing this Sunday? I, I don't know what to wear. I haven't got anything to wear. Well, you know, not literally, but I don't have a dress. I don't have anything that fits. That's the problem. I've put on 15 pounds. Um, I put it on last year, between like January and March of last year, and I can't get it off. So I don't know what to wear because not much fits. So... She says, happy Resurrection Week. That's right. I, I like some people have been posting the little pictures. It says a lot can happen in a week. And it shows you like Jesus being welcomed on Palm Sunday. And then he gets whipped and then he gets crucified and he gets buried. And then he, he rises again. Yeah, a lot can happen in a week. So, all right. Have a blessed time. We'll catch up with you guys later, hopefully tomorrow. I do uh, go pray this afternoon with the girl who, uh, from church, and um, I wish I could show you the quilt. Can you hang on for just a second? I'm going to run downstairs and get the quilt. I really want you to see it. It turned out so nice. Just hang on. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Oh, no. I can't. I just remembered it's out in the car. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the car, so you can't see it. I'll have to show you a picture of it sometime. Maybe I can bring a picture up on my phone. Because it really, it turned out so much better than I expected. It really was nice. And um, where is it? Here it is here. It's very useful. I don't know. Can you see that? Colors don't show up very good, but it's very sparkly with pinks and purples blues and greens she doesn't like yellow orange or red so i didn't put those colors in I just put those in and chris and i worked on it over the weekend and um we calculated it took us 50 hours to make the quilt and um and that's it's about right we were really cruising on it too oh she says beautiful oh thank you thank you i just i'm hoping it's a real blessing for the young lady that we're taking it to so, all right, I got to go. I got to go. You got to go. We got things to do. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>